Welcome to Tuesday. It's the 8th day of February, 2022. Welcome to the Day Weather Podcast. It's being brought to you by Chug Water Chili, the gourmet spice of Western life. Do you got everything ready, everything you need for that thing that's on TV Sunday afternoon? Well, you're going to want to get some Chug Water Chili. Go to chugwaterchili.com and check out their Chug Water Green Chili Seasoning. It's quick. It's really easy to make green chili now with this seasoning. It's a great way to also season other dishes that call for green chili. Use Chug Water Don for 20% off at chugwaterchili.com. Well, brisk winds and Alberta clippers. That's how the next five or six days are going to go. This is exactly what's happened over the last couple of weeks. We have these episodes of windy areas, a couple of days of mild temperatures, and then a front comes through. It'll be breezy and mild pretty much all across the Rockies in the western and central high plains today. We have a clipper on Wednesday that'll come through eastern Montana, the Dakotas, eastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, into the upper Midwest. It really does not have a lot to work with. A few snow showers for some of you in the northern areas and in the mountain areas, but it won't be much. There's a break in the weather Thursday, then another clipper comes during the day Friday and the Saturday morning. That one's a little stronger. That one will make Friday and Saturday a little, not a lot, a little colder. And I do think there'll be a little bit of snow falling in the high country of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, and the Black Hills as we get into late Friday into early Saturday. So a little fresh snow on the ski slopes for you this weekend. But by Sunday, we're going to clear out again. Now, the models continue to have a difficult time, and that is not to be unexpected. Anytime you start to see a major shift in the weather pattern, and also keep in mind, you probably are noticing the days getting a little longer now. The nights are a little shorter. As you get to the middle to the end of February, and as you start looking at early March, just these subtle, very slow accumulating changes of daylight across the Northern Hemisphere starts to make patterns act a little bit differently as opposed to what you see in December, January, and early February. So that's always gonna make it a little bit difficult for the long range models to, to get a grip on things, even over the next three or four days. The pattern that we've been talking about changing next week is still on tap. The devil, though, is going to be in the details. Satellite photo this morning shows very much a clear pattern across the Intermountain West into the western areas of the Corn Belt. Really not a lot going on. Here's the little clipper system right here that's going to be coming up and down and going right through this area tomorrow, bringing a little bit of weather with it, but really more wind than anything and some high and mid-level clouds. We can see where we are today. High pressure remains anchored right off the west coast. The current system that's making it windy today moving off to the east. And then this little ripple right here is the next clipper. Doesn't look like much, but clippers really don't look like much on a weather chart. By Wednesday afternoon, there's a little bit of a system right here, barely discernible, but there's a pocket of instability and moisture right here. And the end result is going to be tomorrow afternoon into Thursday morning, an area of showers just like this. Again, it's not much but there'll be a little bit of snow shower activity in this area here, maybe back over the central mountains of Colorado and southern Wyoming. We're talking mainly just flurries and some snow showers, but you know maybe a little bit more in the way of uh, one more widespread shower pattern in that area there for tomorrow afternoon and evening. So that's clipper number one. And by Wednesday afternoon into Thursday, we'll see that system move through. High pressure remains where it's been. It's still stuck right there. But as we go into Friday, it doesn't look like much, but I'm showing you Wednesday, Friday. Notice how it looks like things are backing up. Actually, it looks like the weather's in reverse. What's happening here is that as we get into the day on Friday, we see colder air get backed up to the Cottonelle Divide, bringing us some upslope. Then winds aloft, dragging in some Pacific moisture from right here up and over the ridge and down in is just enough to bring some colder temperatures, clouds, and a little bit of precipitation to this area right here as we get into Friday afternoon, Friday night, into Saturday morning, and that northerly flow will bring in some colder air. And this is what it looks like with the second clipper. Notice it's a little bit more west where the moisture is. Again, this is nothing to write home about, but Friday into Saturday, there's gonna be snow shower activity here, heavier in the Black Hills. I think the bighorns could do well, and you can see with the snowfall forecast, this is a good pattern for the bighorns, this is a good pattern for the Black Hills. They get several inches of snow out of this secondary wave clipper system Friday into early Saturday, and then as you get out into the plains, there won't be much. There'll be a little bit of shower activity 
down here in southern Colorado overnight Friday and the Saturday morning as well. Then, looking out forward, this is for Monday, Valentine's Day Monday. High pressure is here, but it's just a little bit more to the west now. And there's the next system diving in. The stronger jet stream winds are going to be on the back side of the trough, which means this low is going to want to dig further south than we've seen lately. And so what you're going to see is this low here digging south into the Great Basin, which in turn causes a high pressure ridge to build into the east. Notice what I'm showing you here is a phase change from troughiness along the east coast this weekend into early next week to a change in the weather with a trough building in the west and a ridge building in the east. And I'll show you that here in a minute, what happens. One thing we look at, we've talked about these occasionally, are what's called the Eastern Pacific Oscillation and the Western, Western Pacific Oscillation, the EPO and the WPO. I'm showing you a lot of little dots and squiggly lines here, but what I want to represent is we use these oscillation figures to kind of figure out what's happening in the Pacific in terms of where the high pressure systems are, where the low pressure systems are, and what's likely going to happen. Now down here is the uh, today. This goes out to two weeks. So this goes from today through Friday the 18th. Okay, so we're going out pretty far here. Um, actually going out to about 10 days. And as we look ahead, what we see is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation goes to what's called a negative phase. Notice right now, okay, we are in a positive phase of the Eastern Pacific Oscillation through about Thursday into Friday. Then we go into the negative phase. Now, historically, a negative phase of the Eastern Pacific Oscillation indicates that high pressure is going to build a little bit further west into the Pacific, which means the door to Canada and the door to the Pacific is now more open. When we have a negative phase of the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, that's when we start to see the weather get more active in the western United States in terms of more storms and fronts. Conversely, we also have the uh, Western Pacific Oscillation. It has gone slightly negative, but it goes into negative territory throughout the whole forecast period here, all the way through about the 18th and the 19th of February. When the Western Pacific Oscillation is negative, that means there's storms out in the Northern Pacific. That stormy pattern goes up and over that ridge in the Eastern Pacific, and voila, you have a more active pattern. So when these are both in the negative phase, what happens is, is our confidence that the weather in the western United States is about ready to get really busy again. So sometimes these are in phase and sometimes they're out of phase. Lately, for the last five weeks, they've been kind of out of phase, and that's why the weather's been more focused into the central and eastern areas of the United States. This is the forecast from the European model by next Wednesday. Notice we have a four corners low. We haven't seen that in a while. Now, we will do what I normally do when we have a long range forecast. We put a question mark on it because models aren't reality, models are tools. Sometimes models are like a video game. It looks fun and it looks like you could really have a big storm, but it's just a tool. It's kind of sometimes like a game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But what I'm showing you here is the potential for this pattern change next week in the Western United States. And I told you that that little wave coming in early next week was gonna carve a trough in the West and a high pressure in the East. And that's exactly what's happening here. The high pressure is more further out into the Pacific if this all comes together. So what this means is that the Northern Plains, the Northern Rockies and parts of the Great Basin probably are looking at much better chances of precipitation by Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. California, I think has still gotta wait a little bit longer. But this is a pattern change that is basically 180 from what we've had over the last five weeks. Have yourself a good Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow and we'll have more information on that long range forecast for you. Have a good day, everyone.